Well, hi, Catherine. How are you doing today? Thank you. Hi, Ormi. I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. So we're finally together after the failed attempt that we had the last week where we were trying to have a live Instagram on Instagram. For some reason, my Instagram account, like it just kept frozen. It was not meant to be. So I was like, okay, let's just try it on Zoom. Let's see if we can have a nice conversation about one of our favorite topic. But before I mm -hmm. start, how about you tell everyone who, who you are? Thank you so much. So I'm Catherine Louise. I'm a business mindset mentor and communication expert. And I am a mentor for female leaders, entrepreneurs, executives, businesswomen, you name it, just all, you know, those women in high profile positions, high achievers. And yeah, I'm that ace of their sleeves. And I love it. I love it so much. How long have you been doing this? Oh, gosh. It started actually oh, a long while back because I've been an entrepreneur for 16 years. Yes, I'm that old. <laughs> so it started quite naturally because women, you know, who got to know me were start giving me questions about how it is being a CEO, how it is being an entrepreneur, then also being a mom. You know, that comes with a whole new set of things coming up. And that started quite naturally and I just loved it so much. And I just figured how this was literally giving me life. Mm -hmm. And then I also did a um, course on in Harvard, an online class for leadership. And this is just so my jam. And I just then really started, you know, coaching women. It was quite organically. And then I figured, you know, Coaching is kind of nice, but there's only so much you can do with single sessions. And really the magic is in long-term mentoring. And then I pivoted quite fast into mentoring really at least three to six months and then even longer. And yeah, that's how it all started. <laughs> you had a vocation. It was calling you. You were meant to be doing this. Definitely. I have like I've always known that I'm an entrepreneur but really being this business and mindset mentor for women in those you know really high profile positions mm -hmm. this is my calling this is as you just named it it's my just who I am it doesn't even feel like work but it's giving me life when I watch mm -hmm. my women I call them, <laughs> when I see them succeed and how they evolve and how they thrive and then you know, be successful in their career, but also being fulfilled. Most women believe that wouldn't even be possible, mm -hmm. but indeed it is. That's actually the goal, seeing them thriving and being fulfilled. I even have goosebumps just talking about it right now. That seriously is giving me life. That's just everything to me. That's my purpose. That's what I breathe. Yeah, yeah it's nice. <laughs> yeah, it's nice. You feel you you have a lot of fulfillment and satisfaction from everything that you, that you do. And I think you're a very big advocate of women's empowerment. And I think this is why we connect really well, because like, I'm not an entrepreneur. I like, I do a lot of volunteering things and I enjoy very much helping other people, especially women and mm. mentoring women. And so like, I find a lot of like happiness from like helping out young talent. So I'm assuming you also feel the same as well. Yes, 100%. All right, so I want to uh, deep dive into uh, the topic of today. So I do want to talk about, about personal investing because uh, mm. often we hear the word investing. What we think about is like investing money in the stock market, you know, investing to grow your wealth. But there are other types of investing. And I have a certain definition of investing. I'm sure you have one as well. So tell us a little bit about like, what is your definition of personal investing? What personal investing means to you? And what is one way that you do to invest in yourself? Well, oh, I love that question. <laughs> um, To me, investment really starts with actually investing in yourself. I think there's a huge, huge misconception about when we talk about investment. As you just said, people automatically think about investing in real estate, you know, something tangible, or then again, the stock market, obviously not tangible, but it's like 
this whole idea of investing in yourself first mm -hmm. is just really a thing that has been coming up recently mm -hmm. but doesn't it really make sense because when you invest in yourself and this is why it is so important to me especially when you just start making the money when you start you know climbing up that career ladder the first thing you would really want to invest in is yourself and your knowledge and your leadership skills and your skills overall because at the end of the day I mean we have just experienced what can happen in this world with the recession with the war we have it all simultaneously right now happening nobody would have ever thought that just five to ten years ago right mm -hmm. so but if you invest in yourself and your knowledge and your skills mm -hmm. nobody can ever take that away nobody nothing no recession nothing mm -hmm. and what I love about this idea so much is that no matter what's going to happen on this planet, and it's kind of unpredictable, <laughs> I would suggest, like, like, you will always get back on your feet when you are set in place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well said, definitely. I, I agree with what you said. And I would definitely say that when it comes to like, uh, like, up to grading your skills or you know investing in knowledge I'm the first one because I'm also like that too I think when I think about investing in yourself the first thing that comes to mind is education it's learning and that's one thing that I enjoy very much because it's like you said no one can ever take it from you it's like inside of you at least you know money comes and goes but knowledge it's like the knowledge is power it, it literally is like that and it can bring you so far in life um, mm -hmm. whether it's a career, whether it's you want to start like an, a company, you know, whether you want to write a book, there's so many things that you can do with knowledge. And I totally agree with you. And um, I do want to ask you, is like knowledge one of the things that you enjoy? Like, do you enjoy reading books? Do you enjoy like taking workshop or going to or taking classes? What do you do? Oh, I do it all. <laughs> <laughs> so since my time is a little bit of scars because I have three kids, we yeah. have still run our company and um, I'm obviously working full time now as a mentor, which I enjoy and love so much. I used to love reading books, but when I believe it was when I was pregnant second time around I started switching to audiobooks uh, <laughs> just because I was that desperate so yes I listen to a lot of audiobooks and I'm a huge fan of that then also I love taking classes there especially since the pandemic for actually also really most colleges like Harvard and Yale they do a lot of online courses which I obviously love I did so too and it was just like you know, that kind of really education, as you just said, mm -hmm. it's like that was nourishing my soul. Like I did that class in the height of the pandemic, all three kids at home, all the many craziness. And I did that class at nighttime because I needed that for my soul. And just listening to those really high educated like teachers and professors and all the things it was just like I was just sitting there like uh -huh. soaking it all up <laughs> like mm -hmm. a really sponge and so yes and you know funny enough I figured that I'm almost like addicted I believe <laughs> because it's like I'm so happy when I figure somebody will come up with something new you know what I mean? Especially in self-development, there is so many theories which, you know, have been going back for decades. And I'm just always so happy when I get to learn something new and especially on leadership skills, because I myself need them. I know my um, my women need them too. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I'm, I would say I'm pretty much addicted to learning. Not everything that like, you know, you should really pick your courses and books well obviously like you don't want to waste your time but yes I love it and yeah. I enjoy it yeah what do I, you do what, what do you um, like that I, you know what I'm a little bit like you too in the sense that when I was in university like I'm probably one of those lucky people who found the right thing so when I was in university and I um, I was doing my major 
I I did finance. So I pretty much enjoyed every single class. I enjoyed studying. I enjoyed listening to my professors. I was like, oh my gosh, speak more. And I liked feeding my <laughs> mind and my brain with all this information. And I remember that when I graduated, it was I was so upset. I was like, I don't want to graduate. I want to stay at school forever. And then afterwards, when I started to work, I was like, you know what? Learning doesn't need to stop in a classroom. It can be yeah. like a life can be a learning process. Like you can keep learning forever, you know, being a lifelong learner. This can, this actually like exists and it applies. And so afterwards, I like took a bunch of other like certification. And then I just finished a certification in finance and which is probably one of the hardest ones that I did. But you know what? Like, it was so like fulfilling and it's like you said learning is so addictive and I I actually enjoy it and so now that I don't have to study for this I am actually taking a bunch of courses on it I mean I have people asking me like oh what do you do now you have so much free time I'm like oh don't worry I, like I'm pretty busy I'm taking courses <laughs> I'm on covered. Udemy <laughs> exactly yeah. I'm covered I'm taking courses on Udemy I'm creating ebooks you know it's like so much fun and I and I and I enjoy it I really really enjoy it it's mm-hmm. like you said it's like there's so much like pleasure in it like you know there are people that they cannot wait to finish school and start working but when you work yes there is a learning opportunity but you know what at the end you're just doing the same thing over and over again you have to like spice it up a little bit and I think when it comes to like like especially when you're working full-time I know you are an entrepreneur I work in the corporate world I would say that and this would be an advice for everyone is that if your company is paying for like certification or for courses go for it like literally go for it because there's nothing better than that. Like they're just paying for you and you just have to study. You don't even have to pay a penny for anything. Especially if you're striving for that career. Like, and also I believe it is good for your brain. Like mm-hmm. the human brain. I know, listen, I know there are people who are happy when they're done with school, as you just said. And then, you know, that's it for them. It's a wrap. They just want to live their life and that's fine. But mm-hmm. then there are nerds like you and me. <laughs> I don't even look like one. <laughs> <laughs> who really enjoy it you know obviously there should be space for both but I believe it is so good to also train your brain it is so important the human brain is not made for not learning right mm-hmm. yes and I just think just soaking it all up it's it's like you're, you're never going to be done you're never yeah. going to be done yeah. there's and it, always more to discover huh? yeah and, and like you said I think there is no ending to to learning and um, Mm -hmm. because I know like I also read a lot of books I don't personally enjoy audiobooks like I don't know how people do it I don't know how you do it honestly because I just feel like it's in the car (laughs) it's it's too hard to pay attention because even when I'm listening to podcasts I have to like focus and like if I think about doing this for an audiobook I, I don't think I can do it so I actually prefer like touching the book smelling the book feeling the book and oh, yeah. when people say, oh, I don't have time and I'm thinking, you know, we all have time. It's just, you're not managing it well. And me, for instance, when I am commuting to work, that's when I take the time to read a book. And honestly, you can read many books with the amount of like time that I do back and forth from work to home. Like I actually get to read at least 12 to 13 books per year. Like you can actually read some, so many books and it's too bad that I feel like people are not reading too much nowadays. They don't, they, they're like, oh, I don't have time. They prefer like watching TV. And it's a, it's a pity, I would say. I 100% agree when it comes to like touching a book, smelling <laughs> it, especially the old books. I love that you, but listen, if I would read on my commute to work, we'd have a problem because I drive a car. Nobody <laughs> wants that. <laughs> and I understand that, but I have to say the one thing that I enjoy uh, with audiobooks, especially when the speaker is the author, it's like, You know, sometimes it's hard to read like text messages, like how did this person actually mean that right now? So when the author is the speaker on the audiobook, you actually sense the emotions. Mm -hmm. And this is why I love it so much. It's like, has that person been happy writing this? What, like, what was the emotion behind that sentence? You get that so much more, but again, the author would need to be the speakers. Other than that, it's kind of, yes. Kind of for mm-hmm. falling asleep, mm-hmm. I want to say, but yeah. that's why I probably love it. Yeah, yeah, me too. And I, what I also like is that now when it comes to like learning, there are so many resources out there. Like we mentioned, yes, there, there are books, but now you can take 
courses online for Harvard. Like you don't have to be there physically there to taking a course. You can take it online. Uh, there are a bunch of podcasts that you can learn from. There are There is a podcast that I'm listening to right now, which is like three hours long. And it's a professor like giving lectures. It's, it's like, it's nice, but it's really long. But it's like, he just says so much information. You can learn so much from his podcast. I watch a lot of like TED Talks because I think with TED Talks, mm-hmm. they're all about like, you know, generate like coming up with an idea. And I think you can see the different perspectives. So I really like TED Talks. I also like watching a bunch of things on YouTube. And YouTube is like so rich. Like if you, if you can find yeah. the right person, you can find so many good things. Yes. Um, and even on Instagram, to be honest, because now there are people like using Instagram for their businesses and there are people pro- giving you tips. And I think that's like another great way to to learn, honestly. Yeah, you just really have to learn how to make use of this new skills, right? Like social media and not skills, but tools that we actually have. Like, Mm -hmm. how do I make them work for myself best? I love how you say that. Yes, it's true. But it really depends on who you follow. Well, and since you love podcasts, I hope you listen to mine too. I will put the link in the description below so people can. <laughs> well, you were a guest on my podcast, and I must say that was such a wonderful episode. If, yeah. Yes, I think there's something there's something to be said about really seeing somebody and hearing the voice. And YouTube is such a wonderful platform for that because it almost feels like you really get a sense of what that where that person is coming from and you learn so much more you take it so much more in like that Harvard course I did that was with videos Mm -hmm. and I was just like I almost felt like I was in the classroom yeah (laughs) you know I was a part of that I could be there and that is you know that's a whole new thing and I really appreciate that yeah I actually did I tell you I was just in Boston like last weekend and I went you to the didn't Harvard. tell me but I saw it oh, on yeah, your yeah, Instagram yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was oh, on yeah. the campus of Harvard and I was like oh I think I would like to study here and I was thinking what degree can I do now <laughs> <laughs> I get that this is like this kind of information you can get there and what you can learn that it's immeasurable like mm-hmm. it's to me it really feels like soul food literally yeah yeah it's like so precious yeah, yeah, I agree. So I want to switch a little bit from like learning to another type of uh, personal investing. And since we talked about career entrepreneurship, I wanted to talk about how can one person invest in their career? So like for me, for instance, when I think about investing in your career, which is still part of like investing in yourself, I think there are ways for you to advance in your career. Uh, when you're investing in yourself. So for instance, like you can take courses to like, uh, you know, enhance your skills uh you can do certification you can have a mentor uh so what are some of the things that you can suggest <laughs> well i would say a mentor and i'm not just talking for myself uh, but right a mentor... <laughs> <laughs> no but seriously a mentor is the biggest game changer and there are a couple of reasons for it and you just can't get there and can't get it anywhere else First of all, it's a constant support and backup system. It's a continuous, really focus on your situation. And then what I have learned with all of the women I'm working with, is like once they have understood, they can fully open up and trust you. Mm -hmm. You know, that relationship is really the most precious, like off limits they can tell me any and everything and in order to perform on such a high level you need that friends and family always want your best but Mm -hmm. from their perspective and Mm -hmm. that might come from a place of love but at the same time might not be serving you and then also they're you know maybe not from this business background they don't know what you're going through and having somebody who knows what you're going through who has been there and who can really give you advice from a professional level mm-hmm. that is a much anything else I know it I've started out the first investment I made in myself was a coach and then a mentor mm-hmm. and this is how I realized oh my 
focus is like courses and you know really investing in your skills is so important but if if you don't have that and this is why I myself prefer any contract starting from six months because also the thing is here with three months two months you start seeing changes and improvements and you will have the first successes. But if you really want them to be ongoing, especially if you're headed towards that career, if you really want to have this sustainable and reliable relationship, this is not going to happen for three months, right? So my suggestion is start, well, first of all, find a mentor that you really trust. And this is also, by the way, the difference between coaching and mentoring Coaching is typically for one session or a couple of sessions, and then mentoring really is that long-term relationship. It's typically not single session ones. And, you know, once you have that and you have that person you can just call on any time, that is, you know, with this kind of backup system, you will be able to perform mm -hmm. on a level that is a match, period. And yes. there is nothing else that could ever replace that. Yeah, it's, It just makes you stronger. You have that own cheerleading. You have that really frank and open feedback as well. And you need that when you're in that position. You need to hear that. And you sort of like have somebody by your side. And this is why I call myself an ace up your sleeve. Because it, it really is having that ace up your sleeve. And... I have never experienced anything else mm -hmm. that is just as valuable as that. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. You know what? My first uh, part-time job, it was uh, being a mentor. Like I was actually being paid for being a mentor in my university. And that was my first time learning about this like concept because I didn't know what it meant. Um, and afterwards, actually, once I graduated and I started to work, I started to have mentors myself. Like I went from being a mentor to being a mentee. But uh, these people that were like my mentors, they were indirectly my mentor. This I call them friendor, like friend, friend plus mentor. And <laughs> yeah. um, and they have been like so valuable because it's like you said, like it's one thing to have your family who will tell you what to do because they they only have one certain view but your friends will probably like will be there listen to you will guide you best in the experience and I I would say this have been really valuable and I started to have a lot of female female mentors at my workplace because I felt like I always needed someone to look up to someone who shared my own experience my own like educational background especially because I needed for my career and so I started to have um like a female mentor, like she was my one of my bosses. And she has been so, 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 so helpful that I was like, you know what, I want to go back and be a mentor myself. So then I started to join an organization to be a mentor. And it's so valuable. Like, honestly, I don't think people realize how much this, like, it's like, they're not trying to like, um, it's not like a coach. It's just people sharing and experience and guiding you based on what they went through. And I think it's so valuable because we always need that type of guidance. You know, we always need someone who's like a bit more experienced to help us out. And I honestly do feel like when it comes to uh, advancing in your career, we all need a mentor, like literally everyone needs one. Well, definitely. And I myself, and I've been growing up with my dad being in a really high position. I don't know anybody performing on such a high level being happy and fulfilled you know and and private life is a thing in those positions mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's really difficult to balance it but you have to figure this out in order to actually also being able to perform well yes it's all intertwined at some stage and when you don't have that backup system especially when it gets rough and also for planning out your career and mm -hmm. what moves do I take next I just don't know anybody performing on such a high level, not having a mentor. Yeah. And this is not about having something luxurious or whatever. You know, obviously, you know, there's a price for it to pay. But at the same time, what you get out of that is so much more. Yeah. So I believe in those kind of positions, it's not even a question. Yeah right? Yeah. What's she going to pay for that? Because it's obvious that, that the outcome is going to be so much greater than that. 
Yeah, I agree with you. And I feel like especially for someone who works in the corporate world, like the all those times that I used to mentor was like, okay, how do I ask for a promotion? How do I ask for a raise? Uh, how do I go for like a career change? And these people, they know it all. So like, whether you're an entrepreneur mm-hmm. or working like um, in a company, you always need one because someone will be there to guide you on things that you're not aware of. Like I was always like I'm sure on, on like how do I ask for a promotion and I asked from I asked my mentor he gave me all this valuable information that I would have not found otherwise for instance so well and here's the thing I'm not saying you can't figure it out yourself but you will save so much time <laughs> and energy and you know once you have hit those high career levels you will come to re- realize the most valuable thing in your life is time mm-hmm. yes like at That's a certain awesome. degree you, you think money is the overall thing but no once you've hit a certain level the most important asset of your life will be time and you will save so much time and hassle and frustration when you have that support system period that's and it. also, I <laughs> this is what, what I love to say. It's a shortcut. It's a shortcut. Just imagine you're like on the bottom of a hill and you're looking up and up there, up on that hill, this is your career goal. Okay. So when you're looking up, you can only see this one way, right? You can't see the other ways. It's not possible. You're at the bottom of the hill. But when you have a mentor who is then typically on the top of that hill where you want to mm-hmm. be at, he will be, he or she, <laughs> will be able to look down and see all of the different other options you can't even see. And a good mentor is never, never going to tell you how to do it, but will guide you for you to figure it out. Yes. Right? Yes. This is where the magic is. And um, not only is it the shortcut, but most likely when you have found a really good mentor and you you know choose wisely there are really great amazing mentors and then there are not just like with mm-hmm. everything else mm-hmm. but if you find that perfect mentor you will also achieve goals and successes you would have not even thought before yeah and success is different to everybody just keep that in mind that you know this what might be success for you might be not be the success for somebody else but really defining what you need and what you want and what, what is fulfilling you. Mm-hmm. And an amazing mentor should just do just that. Yes. I, I honestly agree with uh, with everything that you that you said. And uh, I just I just want to check the time. Okay, so we do have a couple of minutes left. And uh, before we end it, I do want to ask you, I know we both talked about that our favorite way of investing in ourselves is learning, but if you have to choose another one that you love so much, what would it be? And, and then I will share my own one too. You mean in investing in myself or yes. what do you mean? Yeah, in investing in yourself, like what would like you like to be a mentor, I think you like to learn if there was another one that you do, what is it that you, or I can help you, I can tell you what I like to do if you want and then Maybe travel travel okay yeah I like I like that too. yes <laughs> but it, it's like travel because it can take you places you know you can read books you can listen to audiobooks you can research but really like traveling and meeting new cultures and ex- actually experiencing them yeah. especially since I have three kids and they're in that age now where they're fully experienced and will remember later in life so that really is precious. Yes. It is so precious. I know. <laughs> what is I yours? Know. So I also like traveling. And the, the moment you said traveling, I went back to Mexico and I was thinking of how much I enjoyed my trip in Mexico because I got to learn so much from oh. their Mayan culture. But I would say for me, um, it's just um, exploring new type of workouts. So I recently started the well I recently said I was I think I was I've I've been doing it since last year actually but then I took a pause is uh, I started with Muay Thai and then I took a pause and I went to boxing and for Mm. me that was a learning process because first of all I never saw myself doing boxing I was like no this is not like I was like no (laughs) but then I actually I'm I'm glad that I stepped out of my comfort zone uh, because I very much enjoyed Muay Thai but I wasn't quite sure about boxing so I went to boxing and 
I'm telling you, it's my happy place. Like it's literally my happy Aww. place. And I'm glad that I went um outside outside of my comfort, the comfort zone. Yeah. Because I think that when it comes to investing, it's also investing in your health, in your body, in your mind. And I think when you're yes. working out, it's also all interconnected. And I and I like the feeling that I have after boxing. Like it mm-hmm. just makes me so much more like powerful and confident. I'm like, I can conquer the world now. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's that hormone that gets um released when you yeah, do a workout. Yeah, yeah. I get yeah. it. I started going to the gym last year. Mm-hmm. And now I just found another gym which is amazing. And I try to go there at least three times a week. And <laughs> and it's just like it is therapy. It is mental therapy. Exactly. It is exactly. you feel a different person. And also I figured and this is why I like to send my women, my mentees there too, when they gain like experiences that are motivating, they see results in the gym. Boy, this is gonna do something in their career life as well. Yeah. So it has so many beneficials, but better watch out meeting or me at night. She can box. <laughs> yes I can I was I actually enjoy, yeah. I, love I love it I love it I want other women to do boxing we're not that many in that class but there are a few of them we're probably okay. six women and I think 30 guys or something but honestly like it's it's nice even though we're like a like I always try to box with the females there it's actually really nice I can see they're very strong they're there to like like I feel empowered just just seeing them so it's really really nice honestly wow. yeah sounds so nice all right so we are end of uh we're heading towards the end of uh, this uh conversation and before we go i do want to ask you to share your social media links if people want to connect with you if people want to find the mentor where can they find you (laughs) yes i would love that okay so you at uh instagram you're going to find me with uh, the catherine louise louise without an e at the end on YouTube, you can find me at Catherine Louise, and my podcast is called You Can and You Will, because that's what it is. And my website is CatherineLouise.com. Perfect. Thank you so, so much. I'm going to put all the information in the description below so people can find you. And I want to I wanna thank you once again uh, for being here. We finally made it through, so I'm very, very happy. <laughs> and uh, I do oh. want to thank you once again. It's like, it's always nice to talk to you. <laughs> for me it has been a pleasure thank you so much for having me and you know i love talking to you and i could do that for hours it's always like talking to a long lost friend like i know i, feel I enjoy the same. it so i feel much. the same i feel the same too we should do this as serious Honestly, next time you come back on my podcast and then we do this again <laughs> i'll be so down honestly i'll be so down i'm like not kidding <laughs> yeah no Co- i'm not kidding either we should do that yeah coffee so chat with Urmi and Catherine know, <laughs> yes we should do that if anybody wants to listen to our, our podcast episode you totally should because you also get to know Urmi's favorite food which is mine too <laughs> we're like lost friends who found each other after so many years yes. Literally. Yes. <laughs> all right thank you Catherine and bye to everyone else who watched the video thank you bye